I'm Jack Stafford, and I interview inspiring people in service to others as inspiration for a new song. Now, back in episode 69, I interviewed Maria Naira, who is, works for the World Health Organization. And we, talk, we spoke a lot about air quality. And for that song, I wrote about Ella Kissy Debra, who was a nine-year-old in London who was the first person to have air pollution as on her death certificate as the cause of death. And since then, I've been in touch with her mother. And we made a music video for World Clean Air Day. And I really want to speak to her. So I've got her on the show now. And it's a repeat that's not a new song. I'm not going to write another song about it, but it's a chance to draw attention to this this really important area because how many of us live near busy roads, how many people are quietly suffering with respiratory problems caused by air pollution. So I'm very pleased to introduce you to Rosamond Kissy Delbra. I've got a couple of questions I actually want to ask you actually Sarah and and, and I were thinking um, not thinking we were just sort of saying oh you know I'm talking to Jack today and she was like asking me is there anything you do want to ask him and I, I thought actually there is actually I do so yeah all right you start interviewing me well um my, my question really is um well I think um hi I'll start off my, my name is Rosamond um I'm the founder and the director of the Ella Roberta Family Foundation. It was set up by myself and Ella's um, doctors, some who actually treated her when she was alive. And the idea of the foundation was, number one, um, to see if we could find out why she died from asthma. And it's amazing, eight years on, we come to that conclusion. And the other reason really was so that children who live in the area were she did would not suffer the way she had done unfortunately i i can't say we have achieved that that goal far um from it um but now you, you know i started off by asking jack you know did he live in italy which is confirmed so when he said yes so obviously my obvious question is how did you hear hear about the story if you're in italy well i interviewed um maria nera the from the un from the World Health Organization, sorry. And just before I went into the interview, I was reading, uh, I read a cycling magazine. And in the back page of that, just before I went on the interview, was about Ella, the judgment, the inquest had come in. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so that was this. You, you should send me a copy of that. I've never seen that. So that was just like a never serendipitous moment. Anything... So I knew it had to be. Yeah, so many things I've, I've written up about her that I never get to see. And I rely on people saying, guess what I was reading this and there was a bit I never so during after the inquest apparently her story was written up around the world two and a half thousand times wow. and you know I have only seen a fraction um, of that well thank you very much so that's answered my 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 question for because I did kind of I thought okay he's British so yeah he said then I noticed your, your phone number it's there for how does he know about her but you know Jack has explained it so I'll be quiet now. That was my only question for Jack, really. So he can now interview me. But we were, I was talking to Maria and she said she knew you and she'd been in contact with you. So you were in contact with the World Health Organization for quite a while. And how, how did that connection? Yeah, we, we will have a surprise soon. I can't say much. You know, we will have a surprise soon. I will let you in on the secret. Don't worry. No exclusive before here. It, <laughs> not here I'll, I will let you I don't know see with these organizations I don't know what you're allowed to say and what you, you're okay. not so I, I don't want to get um, myself in trouble but don't worry I will I will let you know when the time is right and you can tell um, you can tell your listeners but the World Health Organization I think I met Maria in 2019 we've been on contact on Twitter then Arnold Schwarzenegger invited me to he does a summit every year climate summit every year and he invited me in 2019 and i took my other children there and also the world health organization they were having an event they had invited me the previous year 
but my children were really tiny then and they were like oh well we don't want you to go and etc so I went in 2019 and then what I did is I actually took them with me so I didn't have to worry about leaving them behind and I got to meet Maria in person so I met her at the WHO event and um, we did a Facebook interview actually and then I went up to the Arnold Schwarzenegger um, thing in Austria and guess what Maria was there as well so it was really weird it was like I spent these three days with her but you know She's an awesome doctor. She's, number one, she's a doctor. She kind of gets it. Um, and a lot of people at WHO, for me, it was really nice to go to WHO. WHO felt like home because you were talking with people who actually were looking at the health aspects of it. Um, a lot of campaigning, I find, in the UK is a lot of it is to do with politics, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. And going to the WHO was... I met so many like-minded people. It was an amazing time. And I was going to go the following year and then COVID happened and I haven't been back ever since. But hopefully as we learn to live with COVID in different ways, I will get an opportunity to go there. I mean, why do, what do I like about the WHO? I, I'm not really interested in all the politics part of it as you can um, imagine and you know when people see it you know they just start commenting they've done this they've done i'm not really interested in it i'm really interested in the raising awareness bit and the good work which they do not just in europe in africa asia and hopefully one day because air pollution is everywhere and it it claims 8.8 mm. 8 million lives prematurely and a lot of them are from africa and asia and that's every year by the way every year and a lot of them are from those countries and one of the things all the countries have uh, in common is transport. So a lot of emissions come from that. But they've all got different other sources like um, coal in Eastern Europe. Some parts of Eastern Europe still have coal and things like that. Um, in parts of Africa, um, my motherland, Ghana, ours is mainly from cooking. That's where we have our PM um, comes from. Um just charging my thing. I do that all the time. I run it down. Um, so, yeah. That's when I was in India or traveling around Asia. Proud of... Yeah. Sure. When, when I was traveling around a lot, they, they also, you know, there's a lot of burning of plastic, um, a burning of rubbish. Um, so there's all these different sources of pollution. And, and, with, and when in, with London, Fire it's just works. the traffic, yeah. Yeah, really? fireworks. Well, in, in the UK, 65% of pollution comes from um, emissions, but that leaves another 35%. Wood burning, ammonia, mm. construction in the building industry. Mm. Um, I'm sure on the canals, all those diesels, they don't help. So it's really everything. But the major source really is transport. Um and that transport is just really, really difficult because in the UK, we are addicted to our cars, really. Mm. I think apart from, you know, there's that saying, the actual the English man's home is his castle or whatever. So apart from our homes, the, the next thing we have pride in, bizarrely, is cars. And I don't know whether cars... Um, cars show people i don't know whether they are used as a sign of wealth look, look what i'm driving or something like that <laughs> because in in a city like london i mean some of the cars i mean please like massive range rovers sort of worth about you know seventy thousand pounds pounding down these tiny tiny roads i mean th there really is no need and i'm, I'm not going to name this person who um Bless her, she just had another um, another child and she went, my family's expanding, so therefore I thought I'll get another car. And people might think she's got six kids, seven, no. Two children decided the next car up was a massive Range Rover. Mm. And again, it's just flaunting wealth. And I can only talk about the British psyche, but cars are a way, I guess, people show off how much money they have and stuff like that. Uh, but a lot of it's not just the fact that we drive cars we just drive these massive cars that there is no need for them mm. in 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 the cities and i always say the short journeys 
we can, you know, surveys have shown or research, people are prepared to walk up to two miles. So short journeys, we, we, we really need to start encouraging people to walk, not just about a pollution point of view, but a health point of view. I think, I don't know whether we are the worst country in Europe now for obesity, because we're very close behind the United States. And for me, it goes back to children again. A lot of children are overweight, and that is the cons the concern. I know people will start screaming, going, "Oh, that's to do with poverty diet." But exercise is also a massive thing, and you know, it is about we are storing up problems for the future, as we all know. If you have young kids in primary who are overweight now and who are obese now, then in their twenties, even they're going to start having health conditions. So the, the the battle isn't just about air pollution, it's about health in general. And the reason why I talk about health all the time is even if people are not dying, when I was younger, I, I was telling my children, those days, one in seven people died from cancer and it's now one in two. Really? So you can see things have changed. And air pollution, sadly, Jack, is, you know, if you, I always say that, you know, I campaign on this and I sort of still live where I live in Lewisham and there are, there are thousands of people that live here but we all of us that live here there's 375,000 people that live in Lewisham and it'll be interesting to see how many live off this main road south south circular but we are all even whether you smoke or not you're 10 percent well even if you don't smoke you're 10 percent more likely going to get lung, lung cancer purely because of where you live the, the air pollution is so bad especially in the worst areas in london it is e equivalent to passive smoking 10 cigarettes daily and, and that i mean india is even worse i know but yeah so it, it shows you and my frustration jack is when i hear people say things like i think that's the one thing that gets to me the air is cleaner than before i think dodgy diagrams and modeling uh, you know the air can't be cleaner than before Otherwise, all these people would not be getting ill. And I don't know what's going on. You've got dementia, you've got strokes, cardiovascular, you've got asthma, you've got respiratory illnesses. So to me, it doesn't really add up when people go, the air is cleaner than before. So my thing is, why then all these people are getting all these illnesses, which have shown are linked to air pollution. So there's something really seriously going wrong. And what people tend to do is, believe it or not, they then go and get these diagrams and show me pollution going down. And I thought, I, I know what I know. What I'm talking about is when you're walking on the street, what you're exposed to and what you're breathing in. And to me, you can't capture that in a diagram. It is what we're breathing in um, day to day. And I am okay now, but when the verdict came in December, it was a tough one. It was a tough pill to swallow because my background is teaching and you know head of year and you you know you're always there for your students and i sort of felt that i couldn't really help my daughter and i think when the coroner sort of said without the levels of illegal air pollution not only would ella never have got asthma um she would still be here now and that is a tough you know when you have a really bad day that's a really tough one mm. to kind of um deal with and when i look at what's going on now I can't sort of say to you in Italy, things have got better now. No, i.e. what that tells me is she would, she would have always died. It was just a case of when really, because I can't sit here now and tell you the air is so much more cleaner and no, the campaign goes on and areas where it's really dense, you know, like cities, Manchester, Birmingham, um, Glasgow, all those sort of cities, the, the the asthma rate is sky high there's more density there there's more inequality there there's more covid cases there i'm going to push to hopefully get air pollution um down as one of the um items on the public inquiry because areas of high air pollution have more covid deaths really? not sure what's going on there either and it's just yeah when i started off i i do admit i was very focused on Ella, didn't really know much about air pollution, wanted to get to the bottom of why she died, why she suffered so horrendously. And I, I look at really sick 
COVID patients in wards, you know, they can't breathe. They sound like her. So in case anyone ever wanted to know what it was like, if you see a really, you know, a COVID patient struggling to breathe, that's how Ella was. So I guess that was some form of warning somewhere was to come. And things just haven't got better. Poverty's increased. And I've noticed areas of poverty have higher air pollution and just been on this long journey. And even talking to a bunch of doctors on Friday, I was with them on a webinar between nine and four. They are the ones that treat children with severe asthma. Same problems. So children are still dying. And the battle goes on, Jack. It's just, and you know, it's a massive thank you to you. Um, you know, the song which you did was in incredibly moving and we will continue to promote it and we hope it helps with awareness. I thought the video was so, so powerful. So thank you so much. And hopefully people that see it will relate to it no matter where they are. It's not just a London or an England problem. You could literally show that video anywhere in the world and it's relevant. So I, I know it took you a lot of time to put it together and it even till the last minute you were still working on it but we, we hope we can do it justice and on my campaign going around with WHO I hope I get to show it in um, different countries uh, about air, air pollution is everywhere mm. it's, a pan, it, it's the first pandemic even before COVID and the bit I, I was alluring to before we came on air the difference between between COVID and air pollution is, we know COVID can shut down economies straight away. You know, you have a spike and it can shut down economies. And air pollution isn't like that. Air pollution is linked to, you know, asthma attacks and cardiac arrest, but it doesn't shut down the e economy. And to me, that is the reason why politicians or governments haven't invested or haven't taken air pollution as seriously as COVID. Uh, trust me, if air pollution shut down e economies, they'll be racing out to clean up the air. Uh, seriously. Uh, uh, and when I say it, people think, oh, but th that is really true. I've looked at it. Looked at COVID, looked at air pollution, both airborne, both pandemics. What's the difference? One can shut down an economy and one doesn't. Although one or, or both of them can lead to long-term complications and but that is really the main difference b between them believe it or not i.e money hmm. yeah it's the slow cooking versus the fast cooking yeah it is oh i like that jack the slow oh that's really good by the way people i've got another phrase now slow cooking <laughs> versus the no it really no it really is that and i kind of rant a bit because i get so angry about it or when people write to me from India or um, South Korea or wherever they are about air pollution and how much people are, are suffering. And, you know, because when I see on my television screen, if I'm watching the news and I, I see a child in Syria on a nebulizer fighting to breathe, it's no different me seeing a child in Lewisham. Mm. It's the same nebulizer, the same oxygen, the same... It is the same, you know, someone fighting to breathe. It doesn't matter whether it's in India, Africa, um, Australia. Australia has an image of um, being healthy and hot. And, but they've got a huge asthma problem there, mm. a, a, a massive one in, in Australia, which I was shocked when I found out. So, you know, asthma is there about 359 million people in the world who have asthma. Wow. Loads of people have asthma. So, and unfortunately, asthma, as I learned again on Friday, talking to doctors, there's no cure for asthma, by the way. Once you've got it, um, th that's it. And years ago, doctors used to say, oh, you can grow out of it. But even they've stopped saying that because people who've had asthma in their early teens or in, in their beginning of childhood, their asthma has disappeared. And as of late now, people in their 40s and 50s, the asthma is returning. So again pollution so yeah it's just it's just shocking but i need doctors to talk up talk talk about it more i think a lot wasn't known in the beginning so this isn't a blame game really but now there's about seventy thousand papers there talking about air pollution 
So we really need medics now. The same way they spoke about the tobacco years ago, because tobacco, remember, tobacco used to be really cool. It was in films and stuff like that. And then doctors got on it. We don't need a 40-year campaign, though. That much we don't need, no. Um, but I need medics all over the world. You know, doctors in India need to talk about this. Uh, doctors in China, ev everywhere. Uh, because, you know, the feedback I'm getting, air pollution is a problem everywhere. And even in the undeveloped countries, I've no I'm not going to name any governments, but starting to sell them cars, I'm thinking, oh, have they not learned their 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 lessons from the West? Cars, people think are freedom. They will eventually end up trapping you. So I don't, you know, maybe they need to encourage those people who don't have it, maybe to cycle to start off with, so they don't get into our bad habits. And diesel, ultimately, the sooner diesel is phased out, um, at the moment in Britain, our deadline twenty thirty. I really wish it could be 2025. It, it just means that more lives will, will be saved, Jack. That every time I ask for something to be moved forward, it's all about saving more lives, basically. That's what it's about. But yeah, air pollution literally impacts us from the cradle to the grave. So it starts off even before we are born. A mother in a high air polluted area, they found who is pregnant. There's even particles in the placenta um so it starts even before yeah before we are we are born it affects children in school it affects their cognitive development they've even found air pollution somewhere linked to autism and i thought goodness me is there nowhere this thing doesn't touch so it is in all our interest and we head to a climate su summit and i hear climate change all the t time and i am on board but i always need to let people know Unless you clean up the air, climate change is never going to be resolved. You know, acid rain, biodiversity, global warming, all courtesy of air pollution. So you can't solve climate change unless you clean up the air. And it's as simple as that. And I feel sometimes we are running before we can walk. Uh, there's all this stuff about climate change. That's why I think it's greenwashing. Because when you talk to them about air pollution... Uh, they just don't really want to know. And I think, oh, don't lie to people. Because unless the, the air is clean, you can't resolve climate. I mean, how can you? Acid rain. How, how can you? So there's a lot of greenwashing going on. And I feel the green pound or the green dollar, that's, you know, again, money. Uh, so on the one hand, I was disappointed to hear politicians. Of course, they'll talk to me and listen. But they're still talking to the fossil fuel lobby the same way. And that's because a lot of the decisions they are making are the here and now. And the people in power for today, they won't be the people in power, will they? 10 years, 15 years time. So they aren't looking at the long term, I feel. I think they're just very, well, I'm from England. I just feel like a lot of decisions are about what's going on now. And very, very short term. And there's not a lot of a lot of long-termism going on. I mean, look at the way they were treating COVID. <laughs> it was COVID is here to stay and everyone wants a quick way that we can all go back to whatever normal was and there's no plans to deal with it long-term. So it's like, you know, we sort of go into lockdown, it goes down, go out, then bit by bit it builds again and let's see where 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 we are. Apparently, the prime minister is reluctant to lock down again. But I know when it comes to an airborne disease, you don't control it. By the way, I learned that from my daughter. Uh, you you you. you don't. Ella was a bit like that. She always thought she could beat you know she could beat these things. She could control her asthma. But airborne pandemics, they have a mind of their own. And my son always says, until it's done. Until COVID is done, there's nothing that, I mean, that's his belief that when it's done and dusted, mum, then it will go away. Mm. But until then, it, you know, he reckons it's going to mutate and mutate and mutate. So, yeah. So, but I remain hopeful. I have to, because yeah. I wake up every, 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 every day. There are many, you know, people like you doing, even a song is positive. And I believe generally people in general care 
a lot of people feel like they don't know what to do, which is fair enough. But I think, you know, you can't now say you haven't heard about climate change. And what I try and do with air pollution is it's more immediate, isn't it? Mm. It's right in people's face. Some people can't relate to climate change because it's too far away. It is in the future. To me, air pollution is very real. It's right in people's faces. If there's a spike in air pollution, there, there are more cardiac arrests, more asthma attacks happen. Um, about a thousand more people go to hospital. So that's p something people can recognize immediately. It's something we can do something about. Drive less. Even if you drive, don't leave your car I idling there. The fumes coming out. So it's things, you know, we can do. It's just minor things we can do, but they are all worth it, Jack. And then the big things, we need the government to act on it. We need to hold them more accountable. Look, governments are there to protect us, to look after our welfare, Jack. And we need to be, and you know, people have asked me about Extinction Rebellion. Look, we all have different ways and means of getting there. But my, my point to people were, if governments were doing what they are meant to be doing, then people wouldn't have to take action or very drastic action. And an example would be um, the CO2 thing going on right now, the shortage. Um, and if you really want to use what Insulate Britain are, are doing, yes, they've got a different way of getting their message across, but some of their demands, if government have put them in place, some of the shortage we've got right now will, will not be there. Um, yeah, we all do things differently. Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily do things the way they do it but it doesn't mean that their points are not valid um they are uh, they are very valid indeed and for me the crisis that people say is 11 years or 10 years away unfortunately for us jack it has already happened um ella's ella's life is all already gone so for us if you spoke to my children you say climate crisis is 10 years away they will look at you oddly for us it's very real and people who live in highly air polluted areas will not say to you, Jack, it's 10 years away. They will say to you, they're suffering the effect. You know, people in, in India, if you went to speak to them about the climate crisis, I'm sure they won't tell you it's 10 years away. Uh, for, for them, they are living. You know, I, I've met Dr. Kumar in India and he operates on young people who have lung cancer. So he showed me a video of a, of a 20 year old Jack. Who had who had lung cancer at twenty? Who who does not smoke? And it's from the polluted air. So for young people like that, depending on where you live in the world, air pollution is very very real. And I hope Ella's death. People up until now, we haven't had a face to it, have we? No. But I hope she will serve as a reminder to people, and that's why your song's so powerful. Um that people can relate to. I mean, it took me a while to get used to it, having her face and her air pollution. <laughs> She's just always my daughter first, isn't she? But I, I feel if her death, you know, accentuates that message, but what people should say is they shouldn't just see it as poor Ella because she would never want people to look at her that way. Oh, God, no. But that it's not just her. There are many others that air pollution um, affects, but it's just good to have a face to it. Because beforehand, people used to say things like, I've noticed that stuff. Well, no one's ever died from air pollution. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed, actually, I haven't heard that in quite a while, actually. So that's a narrative. That she, is it a shame and ultimate sadness for my family that she had to suffer to go through that? Absolutely. Um, but I hope her, her death can end up saving um, millions of lives. And... The bloody martyr she is, she will bloody like that. I, 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 it also was all about when, when, when the doctor said to her, "Oh, your asthma is so bad, you're going to be in the medical books." And she was like, "Yes." And I was like, uh, "No time for martyrdom, my dear. Try and get better." And as her mother, <laughs> that was my, that was my, that was my, that was my hope. Oh no, but she, she, she was incredibly funny. Um, <laughs> she was so so and that's really sad because something so tragic happened to her so people who don't know her think of her as tragic which she will probably pull her face at but she was sort of incredibly funny because I, I sort of remember 
my my friend came to her house where she passed away and she'd gone up to the twins room and she sort of came down and she said to me um are you a bit concerned about them so i saw so what i was like what do you mean she said oh if you notice how they've got pictures of ella on their wall like all over their wall and i was like well yeah and she was all oh, are you not concerned i went no they've always been up there so not not really and she went sorry i said oh of course yeah, I said, Ella used to promote herself. Have, have, have I not told you? I saw it when I went into their room once. They had all these pictures of her. So I questioned her. I said, well, they meant to have pictures of, like, you know, pop stars and, you know, stuff. Mm. Like, she was like, why, why on earth would they want that when they've got me? And I thought, oh, God. So <laughs> she, she, she was so full of herself. And I am glad that lots of people that knew her have... Um, stories and she would really funny enough i was telling sarah she would really appreciate your uh your song because she was a bit of a, a kind of muso um like guitar and cornet and drums and yeah i think she was going places i i i i, I don't know how to kind of sort of put it to you but i i sort of said to a friend once as a teacher children who who are always that talented to that degree they've always got something there's always something Unfortunately, hers was asthma and her and her breathing. And I met her first music teacher, Miss Jackson. Recently, I was communicating with her on Facebook, and I was saying to her to thank her for inspiring all my children who have music music ability, um, not like their mom, but um, yeah. And it will always be a sadness for me, Jack, for someone who was so alive, who loved music, dance, was highly intelligent that, you know, she would have been 18 um, just a month af after Christmas Eve and all that's been kind of wiped out now. But she didn't die in vain now because I've had to take stock of what we achieved. And the more I hear about air pollution, I think what would really satisfy me is to see governments, not just in the UK, but all over the world, clean up the air so... You know, and I put it this way, that air should be a basic human right, the same way water is. We we don't expect people to drink dirty water, do we? So we shouldn't expect people to inhale dirty air. And people shouldn't think that when you're breathing in all these toxic air, nothing's happening to you. All those illnesses, you know, countries all over the world you know me telling you that a 20 year old who doesn't smoke has got lung cancer that that's not right mm. children shouldn't be suffering and the world shouldn't be suffering and that's my sort of message that if Els was here um i think we carry things on in in her memory it will be that breathing clean air is a human right it is our fundamental right that we should um breathe clean air and we are at the foundation, we are incredibly grateful to you for write, writing such a moving song. It really does grow on you people. It, it really does. I think by the time it came out, I was actually depressed for a day listening. It really does grow on you. So that's an amazing, I don't know how you picked the words and it was just amazing. It's just such an amazing tri tribute. And we, you know, me and my family are incredibly grateful for, for you to writing such a simple song, but which is so effective. And I'm sure if she was here, she would be strumming her guitar. Um, <laughs> and also if, if you've got the, the music, send it to me and I'll give it to her brother to play on the, on the piano for you. I'm sure he, he would do that. Okay. I'll do that. Yeah. It's... Yeah. He's a bit of a muso too. Typical, isn't he? Yeah. So if you send the music, I'll, I'll, I'll do a surprise. I'll get him to rehearse it and, and play it for you. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, I mean, because it's unusual for me because normally I write the song after the show. So I'm now I'd be getting, I'd be making, I'd be making notes and thinking of all the, all the things you were saying. I'd be trying to think what rhymes with them and trying to make the song, but I've already done it. So I feel kind of like a loose, at a loose end. <laughs> I, I think that's why I wanted to speak to you because it, it's so difficult to, yeah, that someone who never met her but has just written such a moving song. And I like the way that on my journey of raising awareness about air pollution, I feel that the video you did as well, I can play it in any country and they will 
relate to. So thank you. That that sort of really does help the campaign because it's not just a London sort of issue. It's a worldwide issue. I mean, the figures are just astronomical. 8.8 .8 million people are um, dying prematurely from air pollution. And it's interesting we're talking this week because this week, WHO, they're going to release new guidelines about the limits of um, PM 2.5 and nitrogen dioxide as well. So that will be a big moment again, because what we say at WHO is there's no such thing as a safe limit of air pollution. For children who have asthma or severely respiratory illnesses, even just inhaling a bit of pollution can end up you know, putting them in, in, in hospital. So our motto at WHO limit is there is no safe level. We, we aim or everywhere should aim to get pollution to as low as possible. And sometimes putting these limits and values on it, it does come or targets, it does come with certain issues because people feel as long as they've reached a the target, job done. No, you continue to pollution is as low as possible. We need to do something, Jack, because Ella won't be the only child that dies. And in the UK, we have about 22 to 24 children die every year from asthma in 2021. Our aim is to get to zero. So we, we are nowhere near. When people say, why do you continue doing what you do? Mm. We, we know that during COVID, during the first lockdown in the UK, for the first time between March and July, no child died from asthma. So the bit that NOx went down or nitrogen dioxide went down and the air was really clean, no child died. And then when things resumed and went back to normal, we, within a month, the child had died. So that's my evidence. My evidence is real life. And so children are continuing to be harmed because they are the most vulnerable, not just children, but older citizens as well. And we are living longer. And I, I just feel that the quality of our life is really impacted by air pollution. That's what, um, yeah, I'm not, you know, when, when, when my day is done, it will be done. But living near a busy road is not, great but not everyone can af afford as you know to live in nice green affluent that's not reality really people come to the city to work people you, you, you know london and these cities are very busy places but we need you know p most of the income from london generates income around the whole of the uk mm -hmm. so you can't have everyone emigrating out of london to go to green leafy places it just and a lot of people can't can't afford it, mm -hmm. uh, and that's where where we are. But I, I noticed a theme talking to my European, um, um, you know, people that are like me who campaign for health. It seems to be the same thing all over Europe. Like in poor areas, the quality of the air is worse, and um, definitely people who are poor economically. Um, people from ethnic backgrounds who sometimes, some of them, not all of them, not all of them have got good jobs and they have to take menial, menial jobs. They tend to live closer to main roads and their health is most, most affected um, by it. It's not just a race thing. It's an economic thing. You, you, you have poor white people, you know, you have poor Asian people, you have poor black people. They are all impacted um, in the same way. Um, the actual working classes, are they being considered in this debate about air pollution and climate? I can say that because I'm coming from a good place. Mm. So I, I don't any anyone to, you know, when people get really worried about talking about these things, I don't. Um, because that is the reality where I live. It's the poorer people that are most imp most impacted. Look, if you've got money and you're, if you've got money, you wouldn't even live near a busy road because there's a reason, Jack, why <laughs> houses near busy roads are less expensive, aren't they, yeah. than houses? Which, th th there's a reason for that. Um, that's why. But these things need to, rather than say, oh, woke or this or that, they just need to be spoken about in an intelligent and thing way. And there are, we know, we now know there's money there. I don't want I don't want to hear people say to me anymore that governments don't have money because Kobe showed us when they want to pull out the stops they'll go they'll, so that to me is no longer an an argument by the way I I used to believe that oh they don't have money no 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 no, no. 
they have money, but for some reason, this is just not a priority for them. This is a public health crisis, and it's not just the UK, it's to Europe as well. Um, don't know how they're getting on with the Green New Deal though, uh, over there. And in the, in the United States as well, everywhere, everywhere where there's poor air quality, and people are now calling for environmental justice because of that. Um, poorer communities seem to be dumped on when it comes to air pollution. And it's something when I first started my campaigning, wasn't aware about it. You know, my background is psych psychology, ph philosophy. It wasn't an, an area that I knew much about. But the gap, am I shocked that in the UK, when it comes to health, the gap in inequality in health is getting wider? No, I'm not. And is air pollution one of the driving forces of this? Yes, it is. And I, I'm going to predict it will be the same in most countries because you have affluent and poor people in most countries. And I bet you the situation with air pollution will be global. That like poorer uh, communities all over the world are those most, most suffering. Who's speaking for them, Jack? Mm. You know, wow. who, who, who is? It's a huge fa Not for failure of the companies. Oh, the policy makers, I mean, because with the technology we have nowadays, you know, electric cars and, you know, before maybe everyone needed to have a wood stove so they could do cooking and things like that, basic stuff. But nowadays, there's no excuse for it. Yeah, I mean, electric cars, they're not the most affordable things, are they? Come on. I can't imagine anyone in a poor community being able to afford a 30 grand no, car. No, but the policy, make, policy makers should, you know, subsidize and make it make diesel illegal and uh, use uh, train ra yeah. rail freight instead of instead of uh, road freight. There should be scrappage schemes. Yeah. Yeah, there should be scrappage schemes. I, I, I don't want to hear anyone from Africa writing to me to say that, oh, you never guess where your old diesel cars are. They've shown up on, on, our, on our doorstep. I hope not. Mm. I really, we have a habit of doing that, don't we? Things we don't want, like old buses and things like that. I think they should scrap them this time. Scrap it. Don't send them to other countries. If they're affecting our health and they're terrible for us, why, why, why would we, why would we send them on? I'm not saying that's what we are doing, but I, I am hoping not. Mm -hmm. But I, would I be shocked if someone from India wrote to me and said, oh, "We've seen one of your old <laughs> diesel buses here." Yeah. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I have no hope to find these people who who run our country. But no, if it's bad for us. But it's definitely bad for India and it's Africa or South. Scrap them. Don't mm -hmm. send them on to these countries, which is what we did historically. So let's see what happens with diesel. I really, diesel is so lethal that I, I just don't, someone will, will write to me, by the way. They, they, they will hear this and they'll say, oh, Rosalind, you're a bit late to this thing. They've already started it. I really hope not. Mm. You've been in the I business really, so really long hope now. Not. But yeah, I, yeah, but we must live in hope, Jack, with people like you writing such a song and, um, yeah. oh, that's my son. Let me just op open him. Uh, one sec. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. So yeah, I, I, you know, I have hope. What, what do I have hope? I have hope that before the, um, pandemic, young people were coming out of school when they Friday marching. And I always say, I never need to convince them what a crisis this is with young people. They kind of get it. Um, so they are the future young people, but I think they do need help regarding their their rights and things like that. They are the ones most vulnerable air pollution is affecting. But hopefully with your song, you've given me another platform to be able to communicate with, with them. And as much as they talk about climate change, I also want them to be aware of the air they are breathing because that also will, you know, can stunt their um, lung growth. So yeah, we, we hope when people hear this, they they will you know download your song the ballads of Havana 
and share it far and wide um, and to raise awareness. Um, yeah, and yeah, that will be Ella's legacy. Um, to, it's, it's incredible to think she was only nine and she's left such a legacy. But yeah, those who haven't had um, her story, I hope through music or art, which she was heavily into, that's um, another way they will hear about her story. Uh, we're going to COP26 again. Again, it's to raise awareness about air pollution and what happened to her. And we, we you know, I'm going with her siblings who, who are teenagers themselves, and I want them to represent the future. Yeah. Um, and imagine there being, uh, I mean, it's hard for me to imagine because I know so much, but my hope is one day that children everywhere will breathe cleaner. That's my hope anyway. Then I'm done. Because <laughs> I was going to ask you because you you did the you bat battled for so long to get an inquest and that was the goal that was the the finish line, and then there's that was last year and it's done. Then where do you go? Do you feel like just the beginning? Well, I've or... been one of the, I've been trying to get the coroner's uh, recommendations implemented in the environment bill. That's why I said to you there's a lot of greenwashing. So I I initially thought oh this is going to be straightforward easy it's out there everyone knows the of course it's turned into a tussle it where is it 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 went up to the houses of lords now they've supported the amendment so it's now got to come back to, down to the houses of commons and i really hope this time they really if they have a conscience mm. at all because they've got children and grandchildren they need to not 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 for me it's what the coroner recommended mm. He's a learned man. He sat through nine full days of evidence. And this is his recommendation. In order to prevent future deaths, the WHO guidelines need to be implemented. Not consulted on, implemented. So that's where I am with that fight. Okay. Um, yeah. So, yeah, the Houses of Laws um, have done a great thing this time. And they've supported it. And... It will come back to the Commons maybe by October the 15th. And this time, I really, really hope that they do the right thing by everybody and vote to include it in the Environment Bill. To have the Environment Bill go through and not have the guidelines as part of it, weak. Mm. It's not worth mm. the paper it's written on. So it's very, very important. And people who haven't been aware what's going on or it is not on their ra radar, they, they need to be concerned. The good thing is, it's not playing party politics, but the Labour are supporting it and the Liberals as well. So now we need enough Conservative MPs to support it. They care about the environment. They've got kids. They've got um, grandkids as well. So they need to do the right thing. They've all heard about it. Uh, uh, Ella's case and they know that dirty air is killing us and stuff so they need to stop worrying about their pockets and fossil fuels mm -hmm. and do the right thing that's what they they need to do and we need to get this um bill into law and we need to start working on cleaning up the air we don't need it going between the houses of commons and houses of lords all, all the time and look, people are coming to our country for COP twenty six, and you know, I'm 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 a very proud Brit, and I think it would be a great thing to showcase to the world that you know we've implemented WHO guidelines. It would be great, i.e., as an example that this is where the world needs to be going. I worry that if we can't even get that in. How can we be telling other people what to do when we haven't put our own house in order? So we need to lead by example. To me, when the government mentions Global Britain, to me, this is what Global Britain should be about. Something positive, leading the way and showing other countries that, that human, human lives matter and putting health first. That's what, to me, Global Britain should be all, all about rather than to know What's, what, I don't even know what's going on now, but that is the way. If if people are coming to our country for COP twenty twenty six, we need to say to them, look, this is what we've done. 
we looked at this case, it's killed this child, and we know it's killing children prematurely. We've done it, and we think this is what you need to do. And through that, climate change will also be resolved. So I'm, I'm, I'm waiting mm. patiently. <laughs> and then, COP26 is less than a, I mean, it's less than 100 days to Christmas. I don't know how long it starts on the 1st of November, so not long to go. Mm. So, yeah, the timeline is really, really tight. And I think the government need to get the environment bill through. Uh, it's a good thing to show the rest of the world, but we don't need a toothless environment bill. We want an environment bill with teeth. As for next year, hmm, Ella's law will be coming at some point. Let's wait and see what the government are doing first about the environment bill in COP. So next year we will we will fight on. Does the environment bill cover the the air quality section? Does it cover everything to do with to cleaning up the air? There are a few gaps, but let's just get the first bit over the hurdle. And hopefully Ella's Law will pick up the rest of it. So the fight will go on. Look, if I'm not doing it, I'd like to think one day Ella's siblings will continue to do it. Because uh, clean air is a human right. And it's definitely worth fighting for. Absolutely. Same way we fight for clean water, we, we need to fight for um, clean air. And like you said, the amount of money they spent on COVID tells me they haven't got the money to spend to clean up the air. And... I'm very uh, happy to hear that um, Mr. Biden, President Biden, will be coming to COP. And I'm sure um, he may not have heard about Ella's case, but we hope to bring it to his attention. And I'm sure, I think in the United States, they do have a Clean Air Act. So, see, they're a bit more forward than we are. Even Scotland has a Clean Air Act. So, England, we are lagging behind. But let's wait and see. Tomorrow's another day. You're like this steamroller moving very slowly but very firmly towards its objective. What was that advice you gave me? You said something. I've already forgotten it. Oh, you were saying the difference between COVID and pollution. You said it so well. The fast cooker and it was the something slow to cooker. Do... What did you say uh, again? The fast cook and the slow cook. This... Oh, the fast cook and the slow cook. Yeah. I need to, yeah, I need mm. to get used to that. That's, that, that's a very good... Uh, assessment of what's going on mm. you you weren't wrong by the way uh, yeah so there you are he's a wise one listeners jack is <laughs> but it, it is true no it is true they they all kill mm. it's just one kills faster than the other but ultimately they all need to lead to death the the only relief i have from covid is so far it hasn't affected young people the way air pollution does yeah but I don't want to speak too soon. I, you know, <laughs> dealing with air pollution tells me don't don't talk too soon. Things can change, and you know, viruses mutate. So it, we need to clean up the air, basically. We're well, lovely to meet you in Italy. W when are you next down in in Blighty? No plans. No, no plans yet. But uh, I'll, I'll if I get to London, I'll look you up. Oh, please do. That that'll be lovely. Um, well, not next year, but 2023 will be Ella's 10th anniversary, believe it or not. So we hope to do something learned in, in her memory. We stay in contact, absolutely. And again, a massive thank you from me and Ella's siblings for the beautiful ballad which you wrote. And I hope people continue to listen to it and to share it and continue to fight for clean air. Well, thanks, Rosamund. Thanks for everything you're doing. Um, you're dynamite. Thank you, Janet. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye. -bye. They don't speak to you 
drama they lack Unlike the sound of hearing someone die from an asthma attack gives me shivers that song so thank you to my musicians Maurizio Sarnicola, Massimino Volta and Luigi Falcioni for making that um, if you want to find out more about Roberta's work go to ellaroberta.org and you can also see the video on YouTube just search for the ballad of Ellie Kissy Deborah and please subscribe on YouTube to get notifications when we upload new videos we're doing that every week now videos to old songs to give them a re-release um, please also s follow us on instagram twitter and facebook it's always pod songs forward slash pod songs all right i think that's it so see you next week hey eh? take care have a great one <laughs>